this Velcro noise. ASMR, this is gonna be a great video. Hi, this is Di, the bass playing mom, and I am working on my pedal board. You all really helped me with this, deciding what I needed to purchase, and you gave me a ton of excellent advice. And so this video is going to come to you in four parts. First, we're gonna talk about how many pedals do I actually need? Which ones of the pedals I own do I really need? Two, what order should those pedals go in? Three, my power supply, and four, mounting everything. So let's get started. Don't know if we'll make it through all of it today. Let's see. First comment I'm gonna to read to you is from my friend, Chris Holbrook. We know each other on Facebook as he used to be a guitar player in the band Moneta. That's a whole nother direction for the video if we're gonna talk about Moneta, but Here's what Chris said. He said, there is a Facebook group that has a lot of awesome people with good advice. I get all my great ideas from them. Ha <laughs> ha. Seattle area bass nerds. I know this group. I am part of the Seattle area bass nerds. I have not been real active on the group because they know so much more than me, but I will do better at that. Good advice, Chris. He also mentioned that there is a good website to plan out your pedals and that website is pedalboard.com. It's put together by Pedal Train, and you can actually see the pedals that you own laid out on a virtual board. No Velcro, no moving things around. You can play with it right there online, which is pretty fun and cool. Thanks, Chris, for your advice. Frank, the bassist, says, Di, do you need all those pedals? A tuner, compressor, a chorus, and overdrive should be enough. At least it is for me. Frank, I am thinking about your words. I didn't know if I needed all those pedals. I wasn't using all of them, but I wanted to show you everything that I had. So that was why I brought them to you. And I think you guys gave me some good advice about this. Anthony Francis was a little more direct. He wanted to remind me that my compression could actually amplify hum. And I hadn't thought about that. I haven't had that experience, but it's something I'm going to be on the lookout for now. He questioned my need for the gate. I do have a gate, this noise suppressor from Boss, and I actually swear by this. Uh, I ha don't usually get into the hum situation, but I will digress into that a little bit. There is a hum. It has to do with the venue I play in. I play in a church, and the lights and the sound are on the same circuit. So my split coil bass picks up some of that hum. Now I've been playing on my new Mustang PJ bass and it picks up far less hum. I don't know if they copper lined it or what they did, but I'm getting a lot less hum on that. But they did add LED lights and they have the whole pack that they're based out of, like the whole, what do you call that thing? The whole thingy, the whole power supply pack thing for the LEDs is right next to my bass. So the hum off of the LED pack is so loud that you can actually audible, like hear it in the room. So trying to keep that out of my base is always a challenge. And that's why I do like the gate because even though I don't have it set very high, if I am on a stage with a lot of hum, it will make me quiet between songs. Anthony Francis also questioned my need for a tuner. He said, you've been playing bass all of your life. Why don't you just tune? Well, I can tune out loud. Problem is I am wearing in-ear monitors, which means I can't hear my bass unless it's going through the sound, which means everybody else with in-ear monitors is gonna have to listen to me tune, which is not the most pleasant thing. And the other thing is that I've been playing a couple songs in drop D, and so I need to tune on the fly really quickly. And I can't have it make noise between songs because there's often someone talking. And so when that person's talking, they don't want me going in the background as I tune up back to E from drop D. So that's why I use the Polytune. It works great. It's very quick. Um, I didn't know if you know these are tunable, so you can set them if you want them different than just the standard tuning. Because somebody reset one of ours, and that person could not tune up. It was so funny. Anyway, so that's the struggle. The struggle is real, so I do need a tuner for the setting I'm playing it. The how many pedals? I would say I definitely want my gate. So that's a yes. I still swear by the compression sustain, even though you know I spent a lot of time getting it set 
last week. So yes, I want to be able to tune. I do have a song where I use distortion on part of that song. It's during the bridge. And so I want to be able to use distortion. I have got the big muff, which is designed for bass. It's a great distortion. So I do want to use that. The octabase I have not had in my setup in a long time, but I do really like it. And so I would like to add it back in. I'd like to be able to use it with the distortion. Does that make sense? Let me know in the comments if anything I'm saying here makes absolutely no sense to you. I am up for suggestion. The Joya Vintage Overdrive, everybody has poo-pooed it. And I'm with everyone on that. They're like, ditch the overdrive. It looks really cool though. So if anyone is in the market for an overdrive pedal, I'll be selling that puppy. And then the loop station. Some folks have recommended that this is something that I would probably not use in the setting I'm playing in right now. And so I think I'm gonna hold back on that loop station too. And well, I might actually sell it or I will use it at home when I'm working on songs and you know, if I find a use for it, let's add it back into the board later. Now what I don't have, I don't have a pedal for volume, so I can't swell in and I don't have a chorus yet. So I think those are next on the list. So for now, these are the pedals we have and these are the ones I wanna get into order. I also have a, my own DI. We have several DIs at the church, but I need a passive DI. I had hum on an active DI, so I want to use my own DI so I don't have to look around for the right one. And so we're gonna talk about mounting that and we're gonna talk about mounting my Voodoo Labs Pedal Power ISO 5. We'll talk about mounting that when we get to mounting. But in the meantime, let's just talk about the order of the pedals. You guys had so much great advice. So here we go. So this first piece of advice is from so Carlos Carrillo gave me some great advice. He's going to chime back in when we get to uh, the power supply. But right now, let's talk about the order he suggested for my pedals. The tuner, the compression, the distortion pedal, the octave, and then the noise suppressor. Now, Andy, you have two also had issue with the gate. You know, if I was on humbuckers, I probably wouldn't have this issue. Also maybe standing in a different part of the stage, but for now I swear by the gate, but it wasn't in his rundown. His rundown went tuner, compression, octave, and then distortion pedal, the fuzz. Eduardo de la Veria, he suggested this order, tuner, compression, fuzz, octave, gate. Anthony Francis as well had him in this order, except he had me using the overdrive instead of the fuzz. Gary Blundell started out with the gate, then the octave, and then had me kind of figure out where I want the compression. By consensus, I am thinking of going tuner, compressor, fuzz, octave, gate. Ah. All right, I think I'm figuring this out. There is our tentative order. In the next video, we will set up all of the cables and we will test it and I will demo the, the board. So that is where we'll break today, but I will see you next time. Thank you so much for watching. If you've set up your board, let me know how to go, what bumps in the road did you find and what went great. Also, let me know if you think I'm doing this all wrong because Nothing is permanent right now. So I look forward to hearing from you and make sure you watch my other videos. I talk about bass gear and here's a video that YouTube picked just for you.